What's up YouTube, it's your boy Nash here, welcome back to the channel, and today I have a Crystal Beast updated deck profile for you guys today for the October 2020 format. This is kind of an interesting one because <clears throat> the last time I did a Crystal Beast deck profile, it was actually last year, I completely forgot about it, I believe it was last year, I'm going to have to take a look, let me take a look. Let me... If I remember right, it was I believe it was uh, it was like it, it it was sometime last last year, and it was pretty insane. It's kind of hard to believe that it's been a year. If I can find it. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to find it, but yeah, but yeah, it was actually last year that I uh, <clears throat> that I did the did the deck profile. That one was more of a more of a synchro Xyz base. Now this now this version is more of a fusion Xyz base because there are four fusions in the extra deck. One, two, three, four, five. Five Xyz in, in the extra, two Synchros, and four Links. So it's a mix of it's, it's a mix of everything, but your biggest wing wing condition in the deck in the in, in the deck itself is a is a card from Ooh, excuse me. Is a card from Labyrinth of Nightmare, all the way back in 2003, known as the last warrior from another, from another planet. And you guys are wondering, why is that? Well, it basically prevents your opponent from summoning monsters. If your opponent doesn't have an out to that, they lose. Plain and simple. But without any further ado... <clears throat> This is a much more revamped version of my last build where it was more, it was, it was uh, vaguely similar. Um, I did take some stuff out. I added some, 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 I did put in a few other cards, uh, but I did a lot of test playing with this deck. This deck is absolutely nuts. Absolutely fucking Nuts. So, without any further ado, let's just, let's get straight into it. Obviously, because that I'm running the the Rainbow Neos, you gotta have Elemental Hero Neos and only two Rain Rainbow Dragon. And the reason why is because I'm running the one copy of Rainbow Dragon, the Zenith Crystal Beast. Because because truth be told, Because truth be told, you can actually. Because truth be told, uh, because truth be told, the Zenith Crystal Beast um, is actually actually a Crystal Beast, which is pretty cool. But the reason why I'm, I'm only running two is because you don't you don't want to see Rainbow Dragon in, in your hand. You want to keep it in, in the deck as 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 much as possible. That phone needs to stop. That way, when you activate a card like Neos Fusion or even um, Ultimate Crystal or Ultimate Crystal Magic, you can you can use one of those two to go into Rainbow Over Dragon, or into or into Rainbow Neos, which would which would essentially essentially just win you the game. That's why I'm I'm only running two copies now. The one 
Now, <clears throat> now the one Zenith Crystal Beast, it, it basically acts as a Crystal Beast, which I will get to the crystals in just a second. Next up, we, we have the one copy of Fantastical Dragon Phantasmate. This is basically your, your uh, this is essentially one of your, one of your big uh, draw, draw cards of the deck. God, I'm sick. Um, so with fan, with Phantasmate, it's a it's essentially a a cyber dragon, pot of greed, solemn judgment. What do I mean by that? Well, well, if your opponent were to summon a a link monster, except during the damage step, you can you can special summon Phantasmate from your hand. That is that's the cyber dragon effect. The pot of greed is you're able to draw cards up to the number of link monsters your opponent has plus one. So if they have two like two or three, it's essentially a pot of greed, or it could be a Gristle Charity minus the minus the discard effect. These, now for for the for the Solemn Judgment, well, if they were to Or I or I, I or actually you know what? I take that back. I the 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 draw effect I, I take back is actually not a pot of greed. It's more of a Sort of like a great, sort sort of like a graceful charity of sorts. So I do take it back. I, I I apologize. My mind went blank for a second, but it's it, basically it's a great, it's technically a grace a, a graceful charity of the sort. And then for the solemn judgment effect, where if your opponent were were to activate a card or effect that would target a monster that you have on the field, you you discard one card, negate the activation, and destroy it. In which case you were. In, in which case you're gonna want to discard one of the crystals, one, one of the seven crystals, because you can actually just recycle them back off of the, off of the effects, <clears throat> off of the effects of, of a card like Sapphire Pegasus, which is really cool. Now moving on in, in into the seven crystal beasts, each each of the crystals has their has the same second effect, has the same second effect. Effect where it says if this card is if this face up card is destroyed in a monster zone, you can place it face up in your spell trap zone as a continuous spell instead of sending it sending it to the graveyard. That's what basically the first effect of of Rainbow Dragon the Zenith Crystal Beast is. But but the effect but but the second effect is different because it actually has two different effects. The first one says when an attack is declared involving a crystal beast monster you can special summon this card from your hand, so it's more like a so it's another form of Cyber Dragon of the sort. And then the second effect says you can banish this continuous spell, special summon a level four lower Crystal Beast from your deck, but negates effects if any. If you do, add one Ultimate Crystal monster from your deck to your hand. Ultimate Crystal, hello Rainbow Dragon. So this is so this is the big reason here. So again, again you again you want to try and maximize having Rainbow Dragon. In the deck as much as possible, so you can use, so you can search it off of the effects of, of, the Zenith Crystal Beast, which we are still missing, mind you, um, off of the effects of Neos Fusion or Ultimate Crystal Magic as well, which is really cool. Now, now for the seven crystals, they their first effect is completely different. So first up, we have three copies of Sapphire Pegasus. Once this card is summoned, whether it's whether you normal it or you special it, you can take a Crystal Beast from your hand or deck, from your hand, deck, or graveyard, place it face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. This will give you this will give you leeway for for none other than the Crystal Tree, which I will get to that which I will get to that and and the field spell in just a bit. Next up, we have two copies of Amber Mammoth. Once this, so with this, if a <clears throat> If a monster, you, if a crystal beast monster you you control is being targeted targeted for an attack, you can redirect the attack to Amber Mammoth, which you're gonna want. In which you're gonna want you're gonna want to see that as much as possible because because of the fact that you want to see you want to use your four your four star crystals to go into your rank four plays, i.e. cards like. Tor Cards like Tornado Dragon, Abyss Dweller, which is a, which is basically, which is essentially a Necro Valley, a Necro Valley, so, so so to speak, and a Lightning Shidori, which is basically a, 
which is sort of a really, which is kind of like a really, like a really, not bad, but really intriguing uh, compulse, basically. So, Ember Man's Man is pretty cool. Topaz Tiger is kind of unique, because when, when, when he attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 400 attack during the damage step only. So, it, it does go up to 2k, but it's not that good. So you don't want to use use the effect as much as, at, at all. Unless if your opponent's monster's attack is... Is, like, at a thousand or something like that. Then you know what? No, eh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Being able to deal a thousand damage to your opponent, it's not too bad. Now, now Cobalt Eagle. Two, now, the two copies of Cobalt Eagle. Basically, it's a sort of... It's sort of like a compulsory eva evacuation device, but instead of jumping it back to the hand, a Crystal Beast card you control goes back, goes on top of the deck. So, so essentially you can target, so essentially, so essentially you can target a card like, a card like Sapphire Pegasus, jump it back in, into the main deck, and then when you draw it out, you can normal summon it again, and you're pretty much just good. You're pretty much just good to go. So it's not too bad. Two copies of of Amethyst Cat. This card can just be, be basically attack your opponent directly, but but the damage that your opponent takes is cut in half. So instead of your opponent only you know so instead of your opponent taking 12, 1200 damage, your opponent only takes six only takes um ooh, excuse me only takes twelve hundred damage. Now. The two copies of Emerald Turtle, or Tortoise, I don't know why, why why they call it Tortoise, they could have just called it a turtle, um, basically acts as a, acts as a, sort of like a, sort of like a block attack of sorts, where, where, where it says, once per turn, you can target a monster, you, you control that attack this turn, Change that target to defense position. So again, it's it's a it's basically a block. A, it's basically a much more revamp a much more revamped version of block attack where if you target a monster on the field that's in attack position and switch it to defense. Now I'm only running one copy of Ruby Carbuncle, and the reason being is because if is because even if Ruby is in the graveyard, you can you can set it. You can place it back in into into the spell and trap zone of the effects of Sapphire Pegasus. So if you so if you sent it to, so if so if you use Ruby as like as material for a synchro, let's just say Sapphire Pegasus will just bring it right back. But its effect is actually not too bad if you're gonna go in if you're going into Link plays, which it says when this card is special summon, you can special summon as many Crystal Beast monsters. As many crystal beasts as possible from your spell and trap zones. So, obviously, so obviously, if you if you go if you go into the if you go into a synchro play, or if you were to, or if it were to be discarded off the effects of a card like say say rare value, <coughs> which I'm actually running in 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 the deck, which I'll get which we'll get to the spells here in a second. Basically, you normal summon you you normal summon the sapphire, activate sapphire's effect. Sent, put Ruby in face up into the spell trap zone. Activate and then activate a card like say, oh I don't know Crystal Promise. And then and then and then special summon. Special summon Ruby and then your crystals can go back on can go back into the main, into the main monster zone, like that. That 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 will give you access to go into your link plays your, your fusion plays you know if needed. Your Xyz place, it can give you so many different versatile, so many options once your crystals are on the field. But, obviously we know, if you end up having Rainbow Dragon in, in the hand, and all seven crystals are on the field or in the graveyard, then you can basically, then you can basically summon, summon Rainbow Dragon and then trigger its effect where you can, where you can... Where you can send all, 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 all the crystal beasts 
that that they, that you have on the field to the grave, and he gains a thousand, and Rainbow Dragon would gain a thousand attack for each one. That could be another. That's basically that it's 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 another basic win win condition, if you will. So, it is basic, but but a play like that could really come come could really come a long way if your opponent has n has no outs to it. If they don't have any outs to to something like that. If they don't have 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 any any outs to that, then you essentially just win. And then to round to round out the monster lineup, I'm only run I'm I'm running the one copy of Adam Emancipator Researcher, and the reason being and, and and the reason why I'm running this is 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 for is for two reasons. One, it's a tuner, and two, it has an effect where it says you can excavate the top five cards of your deck, and if you do. Special summon one excavate level four, level four lower non tuner rock monster. Also place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. You can only use each effect once per turn. The first effect says if you control a rock monster except this card, you can special summon this card from your hand. Obviously, obviously there are no rocks in this deck. Um, it's all it's warrior, dragon, uh, beast. Winged Beast, Aqua, Fairy, Fairy, and Researcher is the only rock in in the deck. So that being said, other than obviously obviously Nibiru, but Nibiru is in is actually in the side, and it's a ten star. So you're so you're mainly so you're mainly using it just to ex, ex, just to ex, excavate the cards and to. Basically, give you an idea of how you how, how how your place could have been, basically. But you're mainly using it for single fodder to go into none other none other than Ascension Sky Dragon, which was actually a YCS promo, which was which was actually a YCS prize card of, of a couple a few a few years ago. Cra crazy enough, and I'll and I'll get to him in, in a second. So it would be two. So it, it would be two four stars and a, and so it would be two four star crystals, researcher, boom you get uh, you get ascension sky dragon or ally of justice decisive armor which is which is actually kind of funny which is actually kind of funny but I'll I'll, I'll explain those two um, here in here in a bit once we get to the extra for the spells. There's quite a few spells here. So first up, we have one, the one, the one crystal promise. This card ba basically gives you the power to special summon a, a crystal beast that's in, in in your spell trap zone to your main monster zone. So obviously, so obviously this works in conjunction with with Ruby Carbuncle, which will give which will trigger her effect to spam your board with a bunch of crystal beasts. Go and, and allow you to go into your Xyz place or your Link place, depending on how you see it. Three copies of Crystal Bond. This is this is another. This is a card that is pretty broken, actually. So so what the effect does is this. It says add add one Crystal Beast monster from your deck to your hand and place one Crystal Beast monster with a different name from your deck face up in your spell trap zone as a continuous spell. This ties in conjunction with Crystal. Excuse me, with Crystal Promise because you can add. Because you can add sapphire, because you can, because if you have the crystal tree on 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 the field, you activate you go, you can go ahead and activate activate crystal bond. Add, add 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 the sapphire to your hand. Place the ruby in the back row. That would give you a counter on on your on your crystal tree. Normal summon the sapphire pegasus. Trigger the effect. Place. I'll say cobalt. I'll, I'll, I'll say cobalt in, into the back row. That will give you another counter onto your crystal tree. You activate your tree's effect, send it to the graveyard with the counters, and you can place, I'll say amethyst and emeralds into the back row. That would give you leeway for none other than the field spell Ancient City Rainbow Ruins to give you an additional card to draw. And you're thinning out your deck so you can try to so you can see your your 
your Neos Fusion, which is the next card that I'm going to be talking about here and now. Basically, with Neos Fusion, you basically just you just summon Rain Rainbow Neos. You send Rainbow Dragon and Neos to to the graveyard. Boom! Rainbow Neos is on the field, but it also acts as a protection. So it has an effect similar to Return of the Dragon Lords, where 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 if it were to be destroyed by battle or or card effect or if it were, or if it were to be shuffled into the deck you could send you can banish neo's fusion from your graveyard instead protecting your 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 rainbow neos from being destroyed which is just too broken too broken Next up, we have the one copy of Crystal Blessing. This is kind of an interesting one, but this also, but this actually ties into Crystal Tree as well. So it says, tar target up to two Crystal Beasts beast in, in your grave. Place those targets face up in your spell and trap zone as continuous spells. This this basically helps you with your Crystal Tree, gi giving you, giving you, and yet an, yet another way to get an additional draw. Off of the effects of Rainbow Ruins. Next up, Rare Value, the one Rare Value. Basically, this is your Pot of Greed for 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 the deck. So it says, if you control two or more Crystal Beasts beast in your Spell and Trap Zone, your opponent chooses one in one one of those Crystals in your Spell and Trap Zone. You send you send it to the grave and you draw two cards. So it's a, so in a way, it's kind of like a minus two plus two. So the minus two is, is obviously the risk of losing rare value and a crystal beast in your back row, but you get two cards out of it, which is pretty cool. Next up, we have three copies of Rainbow Bridge. You can pretty much, this card searches out for any crystal spell or, spell or, trap, spell or trap from your deck to your hand. I believe this also works in conjunction with Ancient City Rainbow Ruins because it counts as, because it actually counts as a crystal card, which is kind of funny, uh, but still it's really cool. Really, uh, really awesome searcher. Uh, next up, we have Crystal Abundance. This is basically your your Dark Hole Heavy Storm. Basically, it's Dark Hole and Heavy Storm all rolled into one with an additional effect. So it reads: Send four Crystal Beast cards from your Spell and Trap Zone to the grave. Send as many cards on the field as possible to the graveyard. Then special summon as many Crystal Beasts as possible from your grave up to the number of cards sent to your opponent's sent from your opponent's field to the grave by this card's effect. So if your opponent had had five cards on, on the field and they were sent and those cards were sent to the grave, you get five crystal beasts that would give you what? Potentially that would give you what? Verde Anaconda. Um that that would give you that would give you a card like say Verde Anaconda, um Abyss Dweller and Rainbow Neos right off the bat. Because with Verde Anaconda, you pay 2,000 points, it becomes, the card becomes Neo's Fusion, and boom. And boom, Rain, Rainbow Neo's. You basically have, have, have two powerhouses on the field, because with, um, because with, because with, with Rainbow Neo's, you send you send Verde Anaconda straight to your graveyard. All monsters that that your opponent has are sent to are sent immediately, um, are sent immediately in back in into the deck. So it would take them even so it would take your opponent even longer to remake those plays because of the fact that you have Rainbow Neos and you have your Abyss Dweller on the field. Two powerhouses. Abyss Dweller is a Necro Valley, which is really good. It's just that broken. I don't know why people. I honestly don't know why people overlook this card as nothing, but really, this card is really good. Even though it 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 removes your cards, you don't care about that, especially when you're especially when you're going to be going into your Verde Anaconda, going straight into your Rainbow Neos. It's just that good. It's just that good. It's just that damn good. Next up, we have the one copy of Monster Reborn. You gotta run it. It's Monster Reborn. Anybody who doesn't run Monster Reborn clearly is in the wrong, basically. Next up, we have Crystal Beacon. Special summon. It says, special summon a Crystal Beast monster from from your deck. You must have two or more crystals in your back row. 
to activate and resolve the effect. Again, Ruby Carbuncle, a bunch of crystals, Verde and Verde and Verde Anaconda, Rainbow Neos, you're good to go. Plain and simple. Next up, we have two copies of the Crystal Tree. Of Crystal Tree. This is a cool one because as I said before, so as I said, as I said before, every time you place Every time a crystal is placed into the spell trap zone, whether it's yours or your opponent, you can you get to place a a crystal counter on on this card. And when you feel like you want to go into your ancient city rainbow ruin place, you activate you activate crystal trees effect. You send it to the graveyard with the counters, and however many counters you had had on that tree, it's how many crystals you can place. In your spell and trap zone. So if you had two, you get to place two, and that would give you access to draw an additional card of the effects of Ancient City Rainbow Ruins, which actually has five effects, which has has five different effects. But it all depends on how many crystals are in your back row. So if you have one crystal in your back row, Ancient City Rainbow Ruins cannot be cannot be destroyed by card effects. Two or more, once per turn. The, the battle damage you take is cut in half, but it's only but it, but it only works during your opponent's turn. That's it. If you have three or more, basically you can basically when a spell or trap trap is activated, it acts as like a solemn judgment where you can send a crystal beast monster you control to the grave, negate the activation, and destroy it. It acts as like a solemn judgment. If you have four crystals, this is where the, the where the plus one comes into play. Once per turn during your main phase, you get to draw a card. So it's similar to Fallen Paradise, but instead of only but instead of drawing two, you only get to draw one. And then five is if you have all five in your back row. And then if your back row is completely full, once per turn during your main phase, you can target a crystal beast monster in your spell in your spell trap and summon it. Hello, Ruby Carbuncle. You summon five crystals. Ruby and I'll say Emerald, Verde Anaconda, Neos Fusion. Rainbow Neos, and then you and then you know and then you normal summon the researcher, researcher, Sa uh, sapphire and am an amber mammoth, decisive armor, or ascension sky dragon. The possibilities are endless with these spells. Absolutely insane. And then moving on in into the traps, there are only three, six, eight traps in in the deck. So first up, I got three copies of Waken the Dragon. Self-explanatory. Don't really need, don't really need to explain what what the card does. But for those who are new to the game and have never seen this card before, it is one of the most broken cards in the game. It says it says if this set card in its owner's in its owner's control has left the field because of an opponent's card effect and is now in the graveyard or banished, you can special summon you can special summon a monster from your deck or extra deck. Basically, you're gonna want to go into cards like cards like Last Warrior, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, or Cyber Dragon Infinity. So that way, so that way you can use their effects, and your opponent essentially just can't play any form of Yu-Gi-Oh. Ultimate Crystal Magic. Basically, this is your poly, your polymerization for Rainbow Over Dragon, which is which is really cool. Two copies of Crystal Conclave. This is kind of an in, kind of an interesting one. Because the effect reads, once per turn, if a face-up crystal beast monster or monsters you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can supposed to summon a crystal beast from your from your deck. So, so if it, so because that it were to be, so it so it the the, the crystal beast card them, itself doesn't have to be sent sent to the grave, but if, if it were to be destroyed. So let's say so say for example, let's say for example, I'll say Cobalt Eagle. Let's say Cobalt Eagle Eagle gets gets destroyed. You can trigger Conclave's effect. Special summon Sapphire. Sapphire's effect triggers. Ruby Carbuncle go, goes in, goes into the back row. And if you have your your Crystal Tree in, in in your in your back row face up, a counter gets put on onto the tree, and you're pretty much. Just, and you're pretty much off to the races there from there. But this card actually has a second effect where it says you can send this face up card from your field to the grave and then target a crystal beast card you control and one card on the field, return them to the hand. 
You cannot act. You cannot activate these effects in the same chain. So this acts as a double compulse, basically. So what that means is you can target. Is you can target. You can target Sapphire Pegasus, and I'll say, I'll say your your opponent. I'll say their Borderload, their Borderload Savage Dragon. Let's just say that for example. Savage Dragon, instead of going to the hand, it goes back into the extra deck. Sapphire goes back in, goes back to your hand. And you're pretty much just golden from there. And to round out, to round out the main deck, we have two copies, of, two copies of Solemn Warning. Obviously, you don't want your opponent activating card effects that would... That would, that would special summon. So, Solemn Warning could really help you out. Solemn Warning, Solemn Warning could really help you out. Moving on into the extra deck, first up we have the one, we have the one Rainbow Over Dragon. This is a really cool one, because, because there are two ways that 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 you can summon this card. You can either a you you can either a fuse all seven crystals and send them to the graveyard, or or you can tribute Rainbow Dragon. To summon this card, in which case you don't need polymerization, which is pretty cool. And its effect is actually kind of is actually pretty badass because it says, "Ooh, excuse me," because because its effect says, "Once per turn, you can banish a crystal beast monster from from your, from your grave. This card gains attack equal to the banished monsters until the end of the turn. Turn and and it, its other effect says, as a quick effect, you can tribute tribute this fusion summon card, shuffle all cards all cards on the field." into the deck. This is similar to um similar to to Rainbow Dragon where in where where um where with Rainbow Dragon Dragon you have to banish all seven crystals to shovel all cards on the field On, on the field in, into the deck with this, with Rainbow Over Dragon, you just need to tribute it, and you're pretty much just off, and you're pretty much just good good to go for Rainbow Neos, which is the the next the next one I'm going to talk about. A 4,500 beat stick, basically having three different effects, where where you can either a send a monster you control to to the grave to shuffle all monsters your opponent controls into the deck, b send a spell or trap card you control to the grave. Shuffle all spells and traps your opponent controls into the deck, or you can send a card from the top of your deck to the grave. Shuffle all cards your opponent in, in your opponent's grave into the deck. Do you really want to do that? Answer: No, because answer: Yes and no. Yes, because it because if your opponent because if your opponent has a bunch of cards in has 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 cards in your in their grave that can be recycled. And can be used to go back to go into into some some of the cards that are in the extra deck. You gonna you're you're gonna want to give them. You're gonna want to force them to re to remake their board all over again, which could take up the entire time limit, which I believe, which is which is like 40, 45 minutes. That's pretty. That's bad. That's bad news for your opponent. But you're mainly gonna want to use Rainbow Neos for its first effect. Because, because again, making again making a board with just the cards you 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 have in your hand is literally almost impossible. Unless if your deck is combo based, then you're pretty much just okay. Next up, we have we have Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Basically, this is one of the big reasons why I'm running Waking the Dragon. This card is just absolutely nuts. You don't need the Red Eyes package. To summon this card, all you need is just wake is just waking the dragon, because at this stage, because at this stage you don't care about dealing damage to your opponent. You can deal damage to your opponent with the with with the rest of your cards. All you need this card for is is the second effect, where. Where it says, once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, as a quick effect, you can discard one card, negate the activation, and destroy it. And if you do that, this card gains a thousand attack. Be able to, and I, truth be told, truth be told, this is not, I believe, and truth be told, if I remember correctly, this is not a once per turn. This is a mandatory, I believe this is a mandatory effect. So, 
yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, pretty crazy. Next up, we have Last Warrior from, from, from another planet. A very old school card, very old school. We're talking Labyrinth the Nightmare old school. So once the card is on is is on the field, all monsters, all other monsters that you have on the field are destroyed. But if you have this and say Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, that's pretty fucking broken. Because Red Eyes Dark Dark Dragoon cannot be cannot be cannot be destroyed by card effects, nor can it be targeted. With card effects. And hello last warrior. Last warrior destroys them. And red eyes dark 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 dragoon can't be destroyed by card effects. So if, so if you have both both these two cards on the field. Your opponent can't play can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. They lose. Game over. GG. Next up we have Ally of Justice De Decisive Armor. This is mainly used to go up against the light decks. Because it has three different effects. So... So it says, so the first effect says, says, select one set card your opponent controls and destroy it. It's basically a form of MST, so, so to speak. Send one card from your hand to the grave, destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. Harpy's Feather Duster, of course. Send all cards you, in, in your hand to the grave, look at your opponent's hand, and send all light monsters in, in their hand to the grave. Then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the total attack of, attack of the monsters sent to the grave. So self-explanatory. Don't need to explain anything. Next up, we have the one. We have the one as Ascension Sky Dragon. This required. This basically requires a tuner and one or more non-tuners. You can do. You can do Sapphire, Amber, Researcher, and you instantly have this because it gains. Because with Ascension with Ascension Sky Dragon, it gains 800 attack for each card currently in your hand. And when this card you control is destroyed by, by, by your opponent's card and sent to your, to your grave, if all the monsters that were used for synchro for the synchro summon of, of the card are in the grave, you can summon them back back to the field, but their effects are negated. That would give you access to summon decisive armor right off the bat. Plus, plus you can also re re you can also resummon this card off of the effects of 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 Monster Reborn and and if he were to be destroyed again you can go ahead and resummon them back to go into to go into decisive armor as well which is another way you can go into decisive armor as well now moving on into the Exceeds package first up we have the Abyss Dweller this pretty much acts as a Necro Valley of sorts. Which is really awesome. Don't need to explain explain any further. Lightning Shidori. I'm thinking about take. I'm, I'm thinking about cutting this one honestly, um, because it's, because it, it it requires four wind monsters and when it comes to the Crystal Beast, Sapphire and Cobalt are 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 your only wins. So yeah, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about cut, cutting this one and replacing it with something else. I don't know what though. But basically, with this card, with, with this card, if this card is exceed summon, target one set card. Your opponent controls re, re, return that target to the bottom to the bottom of the deck. So it acts as like a compulsory eva evacuation device as well. Actually, 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 this is a double compulse because 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 the second effect says most per turn you can detach one material from this card. Target a face up card. Your opponent controls return it to the top of the deck. So it acts as like a double compulse. The first compulse is upon being exceed summoned and then the second one is basically is basically a, is basically a once per turn where you detach a material so it's basically three compulsory evacuation devices in one single exceed monster which is really cool next up we have the one tornado dragon this acts as like a this acts as a mystical space typhoon where you can detach a material from from tornado dragon target a spell target one spell or trap on, on the field and destroy which is really good Cyber Dragon Infinity, basically, all, the only thing you're doing with, with this card is two things. One is you're using it as a Omni Negate, where, where, where if you have multiple oh, multiple Exceeds materials on this card, you can just de you can you can you can detach one and negate the activation of a card that that your opponent may have on the field, which is absolutely nuts. So it can acts as like a solemn judgment of sorts, but. But the more the more exceeds materials you absorb that infinity absorbs, 
the more board wipes you're going to have for this next card. Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder. Yes, Zeus is actually in this deck, which is fucking crazy. So, so it's funny because, because, let's say this card, let's say, let's say Cyber Dragon Infinity has, say, has, I'll say, 11 over, 11 materials. Let's just say that as, as an example, as an example. You, you rank this card up into Zeus, that's 12. Because 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 Cyber Infinity counts as as a material for Zeus, which is absolutely nuts. That's six board wipes for your opponent. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely nuts. And then and then moving on in, into the links, I've in, into the link monsters. We got the one the one deco, deco talker. This card is just bait. Th th this card is just really good. This card is really good. It says that it gains 500 attack for each monster it points to, and and when, when your point activates a card or effect that targets this card you control, as a quick effect you can trigger a tribute a monster this card points to, negate the activation, and destroy. This acts as another form of solemn judgment, which is really cool. Then for the nightmare package we have the one phoenix and the one unicorn. Self-explanatory. Don't need to explain what what it does, but if this, but if but if they're co-linked with a card like say say Verde Anaconda or even also Deco Talker. You get to draw cards right off the bat. So this is another way to draw cards to search out to search out your to search out your you know, you know your cards like your your ancient city or whatnot. Hence the reason why I am hence the reason why I'm not running terraforming in this deck. And then of course Verde Anaconda going into Rainbow Neos self explanatory. No need to explain what it does. Moving on in into the side. This is pretty. This is pretty much pretty. Much a self-explanatory side, but still, it but still, it, this is a pretty good deck, deck. The side deck is pretty broken because it is hand traps for days. First up, we have so we have the two copies of Nibiru, the Primal Being, another form of Zeus. It's a board wipe. Plus, your opponent gets a token, which, in which, if you were in which, in in which case, in 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 which case, let's say you did run the. The the red eyes package, red red eyes dark Draco could really help out, but it really it, it it really doesn't matter because you don't care about about the token being on your opponent's field. All, all you care about is just wiping your opponent's board and being able to um and being able to just have your opponent not play Yu Gi Oh at all. So it helps out a lot. Next up, we have two copies of we have two copies of Ash Blossom, two copies of Ghost Mourner, and two copies of Ghost Sister. I'm actually thinking about you know what? Actually, you know what? I have a better idea. I'm gonna take out the two Ghost Sisters and I'm gonna put Ghost Bell because Ghost Bell is actually a lot more is is a lot better than um. Is a lot better than. Um... Oh wait, hang on, guys. I gotta lock back in. There we go. There we go. So I did. So I did. Um... I was planning on using a ghost ghost sister. And the reason being is because Ghost Sister has 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 an effect says says during during other players' turn except except the end phase as a quick effect you can discard this card apply this effect this turn you can only use this effect once per turn eight, once per turn each time your opponent supposed summons an effect monster during the main phase or battle phase you gain life points equal to that monster's attack if you did not gain life points by this effect your life points are halved during the end phase I realize. Ghost Bell works it is is ten times better than Ghost Sister because Ghost Bell focuses on 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 three things: adding cards from the graveyard back to the hand deck or the extra deck, which in 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 which case, pot you know a card like Pot of Avarice of course, um, using a card like Monster Reborn or banishing cards from the grave. So Ghost Bell works. 
10 times better than Ghost Sister, so yeah. Then, of course, Harpy's Feather Duster and Call, and Call by the Grave, self-explanatory with them. Cross Out Designator, the newest card from the Tins. I'm only running two copies, but still, still, still having to call out, call out Nibiru, Ash Blossom, you know, any of these hand traps, even Fan Phantasme. Your opponent can't can't use them at all during your during, during the turn, which is pretty cool. And then to round out the traps, we have the one judgment of Anubis, being able to deal your opponent damage and negate a spell card that would destroy back row. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And then of course Psalm Psalm Strike whenever your opponent tries to do some some crazy ass fucking bullshit. So that is going to do it for this deck profile. This is so much again, as I said, it's a, it's 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 a much more revamped version of, of the deck, but still absolutely nuts. I did a I did a lot of test playing with this deck. Absolutely fucking crazy. It's more of a beatdown, more of a beatdown control, sort of. So but that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, you guys want more, more deck, deck profiles in the foreseeable future. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any new content that comes your way. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All the links will be down in the description below. And if you guys have any family you want to send me and want me to open up on the channel, my address will also be in the description as well. And on that... This is this is your boy Nash signing out.